welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about a topic that a lot of the kids on this channel have been requesting me to talk about and that is how to convince your parents to get you a pet. First of all, make sure that you do your research so that you know that you'll be able to take care of your pet and provide it with what it needs. There are tons of videos on my channel about animals and lots of different kinds of animals and there's a playlist that is just care videos for several different animals and there is also playlists for different species. And don't forget to watch the two videos on my channel, The Best and The Worst Pets for Kids. Now it's really important to understand that not everybody can get a pet. And if your parents cannot get you a pet, it's not because they don't love you. I'm 100% sure that your parents are always trying to do what is best for you. I'm able to have a lot of pets because I'm able to pay for them and care for them. And this is my house, so I'm able to have whatever type of animal that I want. When I was a kid, I wasn't able to get whatever type of pet that I wanted. But hopefully this will help you see if a pet is right for your family. And to do this, let's consider reasons as to why your parents might have told you no to a pet. So there's a couple of topics that we're going to go over in this video that might be the reason why your parents are saying no. So one thing we'll be talking about is budget and how much pets cost, the initial cost of buying a pet and the monthly cost of caring for a pet. And then also space. Do you live in an apartment? And will you have to consider a pet deposit? And will you have to think about what pets they allow for you to have in a housing area? And then also responsibility. Can you prove that you are responsible enough to commit to a pet? Of course, there's also a time commitment to think about. Do you actually have enough time to be spending with a pet? And as well as the allergies and mess that a pet can cause. So it's important to first understand why your parents are saying no to you, and then maybe you can convince them. But let's start with budget. Pets do cost a lot of money to take care of, and some more than others. So your parents might have said no to getting a pet because they think that they will cost too much money. So if you have a job, you can offer to use your own money for caring for the pet. Or if you don't, you can ask your parents if you would be allowed to have a budget for the pet. Ask your parents what your budget would be and how much you would be allowed to spend on your pet. And then maybe you'll be able to find a pet that would fit into that budget. For example, a lot of people think that rabbits are very expensive, but they're actually a pet that you can take great care of on a very small budget. And then dogs, for example. Sometimes dogs can cost a lot of money, especially large dogs, but smaller dogs don't eat as much. And sometimes you can find a rescue that will allow you to adopt a dog or a puppy for less than $100, and they'll come spayed or neutered and up to date on their vaccines. And then you can see what programs your city offers for low cost vaccinations. On this topic, it's really important to plan ahead. Ask your parents what your budget would be, and then plan it out. Make a spreadsheet and show your parents what you would be spending your money on. And then the next thing to think about is space. Your parents might have told you no to a pet because they don't think that there's enough space. And if you do live in an apartment, you have to think about the pet deposit. A lot of places charge a very large fee for pet deposits, and some places don't allow certain animals. However, if you think that your family needs a pet to cope with stress or anxiety, there is a way for you to have a pet regardless of your housing rules. At the end of this video, I will link a video about emotional support animals. And these are for people who need a pet to cope with anxiety or stress and are still able to have them even if they do have strict housing rules. Depending on your living situation, maybe you can't get a mini pig, for example, but a cat or a hedgehog might work out for you. Now next, let's talk about responsibility. Sometimes parents say no to an animal because they don't want to be the ones taking care of it. You can't get a pet and then expect your parents to do all of the work. You don't want to clean the cage once and then get bored of it and expect your parents to do it the rest of the time. You need to be responsible enough to make sure that you're caring for the animal all of the time, unless it's something that you really need help with. If your parents aren't convinced that you can do this, then prove it to them by doing some chores around the house without being asked to and do it every day and don't expect anything to change within a week it might take a couple of months but if you think that's too long remember you're gonna have a pet for a couple of years it's important to be realistic about the time that you have to be able to devote to a pet if you have a lot of activities at school you might not have time for a pet so think about the amount of interaction that a pet will need from you for example a ferret will need daily interaction but a hermit crab 
will not. So basically, if your parents do tell you that you don't have enough time to spend with a pet, they may be right. So this is an example where you can also make a spreadsheet and then show your parents how many hours a day you'll be caring for your pet and if that realistically fits into your schedule. Another common reason people say no to pets is because of allergies. It's hard to have a pet if someone in the house has allergies to them. So if someone in the house has allergies to hay, chinchillas, rabbits, and guinea pigs are probably not a good pet for you. And if somebody has allergies to hair, you may want to consider animals that don't have hair, like hairless rats or hairless cats, or even reptiles. And finally, a big reason that people don't want pets or like pets is because of the mess that pets create and the fear of illness. And some pets are messier than others. Birds, for example, are very messy. And pets that eat meat are going to smell a little bit worse than pets that are on a plant-based diet. So guinea pigs and hamsters are going to smell a little bit better than hedgehogs and ferrets. And reptiles are pretty clean because they don't poop as often as mammals. So if your parents are worried about the mess or the smell, try to find a pet that they won't be too bothered by. Show them how you would contain the mess and keep it clean and from smelling. A lot of people are worried that pet rats will spread diseases to humans, but pet rats do not. And really there's very little concern of illnesses coming from pets. And there's articles about this that you can find online. In fact, children that are raised in houses with dogs often have a much stronger immune system than those who do not have a dog. It is believed that having a dog raises their immune system. And I will link an article about that in the description of the video. And finally, maybe your parents are still saying no that you cannot have a pet, but that doesn't mean that you can't help animals. Maybe you can ask your parents if you can volunteer at a rescue and help take care of the animals. You'll be able to spend your weekends caring for the animals, taking the dogs on walks, and interacting with the cats. Thanks for watching this video and be sure to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And be sure to subscribe. I make two new videos about animals every week. And you can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Bye!